Hello and welcome back to my channel where we learn tips and tricks for the elementary music teacher. Okay, here's today's video. So today I want to talk about instruments for your classroom. When you walk into a classroom for the first time as a new teacher, you need to take stock of what's in there. There might be a written inventory that was left behind. You may just have to peruse through the cabinets to see what's there. And probably the first month or so, you're probably gonna just be working with what you have. A lot of districts will give a certain amount of money to music teachers to be able to buy new instruments for their classroom. And if you have that, that's fantastic and definitely take the time to work out your list of what you want to get. Get that order in as soon as you can, but just know that sometimes things don't get ordered quickly or things are out of stock or they aren't shipped in a, in a timely manner. So you need to be okay with working with what you have for the foreseeable future. So my school district has a rhythm focus in the fall and a melody focus in the spring. So all of the instruments that I use in the fall are rhythm and which is non-pitched for the most part, and then pitched instruments in the spring. So this is what I hope you have in your classroom. I hope that you have a lot of rhythm sticks because that is like the bare foundational instrument that we use in elementary music. Rhythm sticks are very easy to learn how to hold. They're very easy to learn how to play. And rhythm sticks come in many varieties of lengths. They come in varieties of smooth. They come in ridge. They come in colors. And you can see a picture of them here. And the ones that I like to use are those small brown ones. And the biggest reason that I chose them is when I first joined the district that I'm at, they had a lot of these. And every one of the schools had just like, I'm talking hundreds of these sticks and they're small enough for everybody to be able to hold even kindergarten and they're ridged. So if you wanted to play a rhythm like quarter note, quarter note, half note, ta, ta, to, and the kids can hear that sound as they lengthen out that note for two beats. So let me back up just a moment. So with rhythm sticks, you want to have enough rhythm sticks that everybody in your class can play them at the same time. You also want to have extras uh, in case they get broken and need to be replaced quickly. For the rest of the instruments that I'm going to talk about, your goal should be about 15 or half of any given class that you have. So for example, the maracas, I have half of my baskets in my classroom have maracas in them. The other half has a different instrument in them. The idea behind that is if I'm going to do a rhythm um, piece and I write for uh, sticks and I write for maracas, I can say this half of the class you're playing maracas, this half of the class you're playing sticks, we're going to play the song and now we're going to switch and we're going to um, be able to play the second instrument. The students really like that because then they get to play two instruments. It also teaches them to listen, it teaches them to work together, it teaches them to focus on the written notation as well, so it really helps to develop the musicianship of each student. So next I want to look at maracas. So you see a couple different types of maracas in here, and the painted maracas I use in my everyday classroom because they have kind of a medium dynamic level to them. And those plastic ones, which are the solid red ones, they are very loud. So they're great for programs, but I just can't handle having half of my students playing them at the same time in that small room. So also in the same picture are tambourines. So you've got tambourines with heads, that's with the skin on there, and you've got tambourines without. I prefer the tambourines without because it's been my experience that tambourines with heads on them, the heads get ripped and the students, uh, they might do it by accident, you know, they're hitting really hard, or they could put their, if it's in the basket and they put their foot through it, or they put the chair through it, many different ways that tambourines get ripped. So after a while, it just, it gets to the point where it's not even worth it, in my personal opinion, to buy the ones with heads on them. It's much easier just to buy the ones without heads on them, and it also encourages the students not to hit that 
that loud in the center hit, but to focus on doing a two finger hit on the rim, which just makes it so much more easy to keep it together and to hear all the other instruments that might be playing at the same time. The other instrument that's in this picture is the triangle. Now the triangle, you definitely need to have something that it dangles by, otherwise it's not gonna resonate. If you don't have anything, I have seen teachers that will use pipe cleaners. Uh, the only problem with that is the little metal part that might come out at the end. A student might get stuck with that. It's really inexpensive to buy the actual triangle. I don't even know it, their technical name. The string with the ball on the end of it that the triangle is supposed to hang from. You can find them in most instrument catalog, catalogs for um, a fairly decent price. And the triangles come with a striker and they come in a variety of forms, but they should always be metal, metal on metal. All right, let's look at this next picture. So the brown ones are claves, and claves are pretty heavy instruments, and they're a little bit complicated for students to play. They have to really concentrate about getting their thumb out of the way, holding them correctly, and hitting them up here, and they could feasibly hurt themselves with them if they're not paying attention. And I, as a result of that, they make a very nice sound. I don't use the claves very often. I might use them in a program, um, but I don't always use them in my day to day. But that's what that instrument is. Also, there are tone blocks, and tone blocks come in many forms. They come in um, single, they come in those double, they come ridged which you can see on another part there, the ridge tone block. And right next to that ridge tone block is the, the Wiro. So the tone block, it, it makes a really nice sound and it's easy to hit and you would use a wooden mallet for that. And they'll come with that. Whatever you end up buying, they will, they will come with those. And the, to the ridge tone blocks are the ones that I like the most because then I can also have them play a ridge, a um, elongated note on there if I want to. So on that same note, the ridge tone blocks and the Wiro's, if, if you are trying to buy new instruments and you really want a sound of a tone block and you like the idea of a Wiro, but you can't afford to do both, the ridge tone block will help you out with that because the ridge tone block can have that nice sound of the Wiro because it does have that nice hollow center like the Wiro does. But if you can get the Wiro, it's great to have that too. Let's talk about mallets. So mallets come in many forms and any of these instruments, if you buy them from a catalog, if they require a mallet, they will send a mallet with them or two mallets with them, depending on what they are. So you've got rubber mallets, plastic mallets, wooden mallets. If you're playing an orphan instrument, they will be yarn or a cloth mallets. So all sorts of mallets, variety of mallets, and just learning what sounds the best and what works the best with each instrument. And like I said, if you're buying an instrument from a catalog, they will come with mallets if they require mallets. If you don't know what mallets to use with which, you can always ask somebody else that has been teaching for a while, or you could just do trial and error. I will tell you that a lot of times you'll get mallets and they might be kind of a medium dynamic level and you'll be like, yep, I'll use that in my classroom. And then you might have some just like those plastic maracas that I was telling you about that are at a very loud dynamic level. And you're like, those are program mallets. I'm going to set them aside. Okay. Let's talk about drums. Drums. Bongos, tubanos, djembes, congas, tom-toms, and there's probably some I didn't name, lollipop, all sorts of drums out there. The students will be super excited if they see those drums come out. So you just need to uh, decide which ones work best for you. Look at how much space you have for storage. I have a very small room with limited storage space and the larger drums. I can't get a lot of them because I just won't have the space to store them. So I tend to go for smaller drums. And it's easier to get the students to be able to use them also because you, they don't need to have a wide space to use it. If they have a huge drum, if they have a smaller drum, they don't need as much space on the floor to sit down and play the drum. Some of the drums come with mallets, some of the drums are just played with flat hand. It just depends on the type of drum. So that's all of my rhythm instruments. Now I'm going to show you what I use in the spring with melody. So you have a, a variety of instruments here in this picture. You have handbells, you have boom whackers, 
resonator bells, that's that big belt, bigger bell set there, and then the individual resonator bells. Now, hand bells are fantastic for programs because they have such a resonant high pitch frequency that you can hear throughout the auditorium without any problem. You probably don't want to use them on a day-to-day -day basis in your classroom because that ringing will probably get to you after a while. So I, I usually use them for programs and of course I have to work with them in the classroom while the students are learning their part for the program. Boom whackers. Boom whackers are super fun. So they are pitched percussion tubes and you just you know, you give, like, let's say you're doing a C chord. So you give a student a C and a G, and you want this other group to play a G chord, a G and a D or a G, B, D, however you want to do it. And you make sure that they have enough room, and I encourage them to hit the floor or the chair next to them. And that's always with the caveat that nobody is sitting in that chair. So you have to spread them out, make sure they have enough room and that they learn the safety um, rules of boom whackers, that they cannot play with them. They are not lightsabers. They're not trying to reenact Star Wars, nor are they trying to hit each other with them or hit anything but what I tell them to hit. So whether it's the floor or their chair, or on occasion, it could be hitting the sticks together if, if they are playing them at the same time. But you could also have them play two different chords. So you could give them a C and a D, and you could say, or a C and a G, whichever way you want to do it, and say, okay, play your red one when, um, when I hold up the number one, and play your green one if it's G, or your orange one if it's um, D, when I hold up the number two, you know, so that that way they get that sense of two different chords playing. Then there's resonator bells and resonator bells can come in. I've seen them super big with too big really for anybody, but maybe, you know, the teacher or the fifth grader to carry. Right. And then I've seen them, you know, pretty small. And this is a kind of a decent sized one that I've had. And the students will sit there and you tell them, you know, put your pointer finger on C, put your other pointer finger on G or whichever way, you know, whatever you're having them play, C, G, C, G, C, G. Then there's individual bells. Um, these bell sets came in a, a C to C diatonic set, each individual bells, and I have like 30 sets of them came in their own case with their own mallets and that works great. You can put that whole case underneath the chair and the students take it out and they get what you want them to use. I however prefer to separate them out so I can give the students just their C and their G or just their F and their C, whatever it is that I'm having them play on that particular day. Works great for kindergarten and first grade. So the resonator bells, those black and white chromatic bells with the red base that you see there, I use that for second grade and up. Those individual bells I use for K and one because it's just so much easier for them to just have the one bell or the two bells that they need rather than them constantly trying to figure out where the C is and where the G is at, the, at a given time. One other instrument that I want to talk about, which my district uses with third and fourth grade is the recorder. If your district doesn't have a requirement for you to teach recorder, that's okay. You might wanna consider doing it for third or fourth grade or both because it is a really good beginning instrument for them to learn um, as their own instrument and learning fingering and technique and breathing. And it's just a really good starter instrument, especially if they have any desire to go on and do band in the future. You may find other instruments in your classroom that I didn't mention on this video. For example, ORF instruments, really big ones. I'll show you in a picture here. A lot of classes have them, some do not. They are quite expensive, but they are very nice instruments to have. So that's definitely an option. You might find a variety of other instruments in your classroom. They could be rain sticks, train whistles, fiber slaps, all sorts of instruments, and you may only find one or two of those, and they could definitely be used to hear different sounds and even to put a, a fun sound into a program piece or something like that. 
I do not have multiples of those instruments. I would use them more as an experience or, or an added piece to a program as opposed to having half the class playing rain sticks at the same time, say for example. So let's talk about the instruments that I have in the baskets of my classroom that are underneath the chairs for the students. Every basket has sticks in them. Every basket has at least one shaking instrument, maracas or a tambourine. And every basket has either a wiro or tone blocks in them or a triangle. So in the end, all baskets have three different instruments in them in my classroom. And it just depends on what song we're doing, um, how I arrange the music will determine which instruments I ask the students to pick up. When you're going to use your instruments for the first time, you need to make sure your students understand what your expectations are for how they get an instrument out. Because there are two or three instruments in there, depending on what you decide to use, and you don't want them to be playing all the instruments or throwing the rest of them around. It, it just gets too noisy and instruments are breakable. So in my case, what I would do is I would show them my basket, which this is a basket that I have at home. It's not what my basket looks like at, at school, but you can see I have multiple instruments in here. And so I would show them by sitting down on my chair, getting out of my chair, picking my basket up, and picking up my maraca and putting it on my shoulder in rest position. Okay, so rest position is something you definitely want to teach them. So for me, rest position with most of my instruments is on your shoulder. Uh, maracas can go on your shoulders. Sticks can go on your shoulders. Instruments like the triangle or tambourine, you're going to want rest position to be on your lap. Okay, and here's that little piece that I was talking about earlier that I do not know the exact name of. But you can find them in most instrument catalogs. For the recorder, they do not take them out of their cases until I have told them to, so they need to sit on their lap. And rest position for the recorder. Some teachers will do the chin. I don't personally like that because, you know, I have makeup on my chin, so I don't want that up against my um, mouthpiece. So another teacher that I learned from has them just put it on top of their lap. And when it's time to put the instruments away, the students need to understand that they need to put them away quietly as well. All right, I hope you learn more about instruments for the elementary music room, and I hope that you subscribe. Have a great day.